This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So what is the primary key? Probably a term you've heard a lot when it comes to databases. Let's take our current database, the address book, underscore primary key, database that is available in your working folder. When we open the contacts table in design view, we can see the fields that we've already added in because we've designed the table. Now what we're meaning by the primary key is a way of uniquely identifying each one record in a particular table. So each table in your database must have a primary key. Now that primary key can be made up of more than one field. So although it's classed as a primary key, it can include more than one field in that primary key. So we're looking for a bit of information within the data that we're collecting that can uniquely identify any one record. So in this case, any one of our contacts. Could we use the first name to uniquely identify any one record? The answer obviously is no, because a lot of people will have the same first name. We will have a number of Johns, a number of Marys, a number of Janes. Could we use the surname as the field that we could use to uniquely identify any one person? Again, the answer would be no. A lot of people have the same surname. There are a lot of Smiths, a lot of Beccaros, a lot of Joneses. Could we use the house or the street or the line two, etc. Now you can see that in the address, obviously there is repetition. A lot of people live in the same street. A lot of people live in the same house number. Even if we were to go with the zip code, this could not uniquely identify any one record because the number of people, a number of properties would share the same zip and postcode. In fact, without going through the rest of the information, because we all have the same situation that not one of them could uniquely identify any one record in our data. What tends to happen when dealing with human data, because we have a lot of repetition in our data values, is computer systems assign us IDs. So you'll find that when you have your data stored on a computer system, you are given an ID. And is that ID that anybody trying to retrieve your information from the database will require because having the unique ID allows you to retrieve that person's information in a flash. So you'll find that when you have a bank account, you are given a bank account number, a unique reference for you. When you start work, you're given a record number, an employee number, a unique reference for you. Nobody else will have the same employee number. Insurance policy, you're given a policy number. So we are giving out unique references for every single database location our data is stored in. So we could do exactly the same. Rather than try and find a unique reference in any of our current data, which is highly unlikely with human information, we could actually assign a key of our own. So if we go to the top of our data field, we can insert another row above here. Now the field we're going to use as a, a data key, a unique reference, doesn't have to be at the top, but it's easier to see if it's at the top. So we can insert a row up here on the table tools design and we get a blank row for our new field. We want a unique reference. Let's call that contact ID. Now, when it comes to the data type, contact IDs could be alphanumeric, so they could be a text field. But in Access, to make life a lot, lot easier for you, there is a nice data type called auto number. And if I choose auto number, what will happen is the first person that gets entered into the database is given number one, the second is given number two, the third is given number three, etc. as you start to enter records. If we were to delete the record with ID number two, the ID number two is then lost. You cannot reassign that to another person because that ID belonged to that person. That's only half the job. That creates us a field that will act as a unique reference for each row. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't tell Access that that is our unique reference. We need to now tell Access that that auto number field is our primary key. And to do that, we select the contact ID line and click primary key up here on the table tools design ribbon. That puts a little key in the left hand margin. You can see that there. Now you can activate the primary key on the right click as well. We can right click and you can see primary key is selected. So I can deselect it or I can put it back on. You need to be able to take it off and put it on because you might accidentally put it on the wrong field anyway. I might accidentally put it on house and think, oh, I didn't mean that. I meant auto number, contact ID. 
notice that it automatically takes it off house when you assign it to another field. So that's the primary key. It is extremely good practice and we'll cover it more when we do the normalization chapter. But it's extremely good practice that every table in your database has a primary key. Now, whether that primary key is made up of one field or multiple fields will depend on the data that you're dealing with. Here, we've chosen to go with a single field, which is going to be a brand new field that we create every time we enter a new record, and that's the contact ID using the data type auto number so that Access just assigns the next number chronologically from one upwards, one step at a time. What you'll notice in the field properties is that index has been changed to yes with no duplicates. Because we've set this as the primary key, the data in the table will be indexed by the primary key. So the data will appear in primary key order. Having made a change to the structure of the database, you'll then need to save your table. And then you're ready to roll with your primary key set in place.